what's going on. So, what caused the blackout? Was it a solar flare, an electromagnetic pulse? Physics went insane. The world went insane. That's a clip from Revolution on NBC. It's a show uh, where modern society is obliterated overnight thanks to an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. It's not just the stuff of television, potentially, though. North Korea just yesterday tested a rocket engine that American officials say could be intended for use in an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> Meanwhile, America's own missile defense system failed to shoot down a test rocket that was flying over the Pacific Ocean. John Moore is an electrical engineer. He says the Korean missile could hit the U.S. with an apocalyptic EMP attack. Mr. Moore joins us tonight to explain how that might happen and what it might mean. Mr. Moore, thanks for coming on. I, you know, you hear things about EMP. Explain it for us, if you could, just in English. What is this? What would it do? How does it work? It happens when somebody sets off a nuclear explosion above the atmosphere, and this destroys or disrupts uh, the electrical power grid, computers, communications, basically takes civilization back to the 1800s. So it disables anything electronic. Are, are we sure this could happen? I mean, it's never happened. We're sure we know it, could it could happen. We're sure it could happen. It, it probably wouldn't disable everything, but it would disable enough in our highly connected just-in-time, efficient technological civilization to cause chaos that could cause tens of millions of Americans to die before it's sorted out. Tens of millions? Tens of millions. Because if you have no electric power for six months to a year, you have no food delivery, you have no gasoline, you have no water, uh, you know, you think about that, it's pretty bad. And so you're saying tens of millions could die without being killed by the explosion itself, just because That's right, the explosion. of living in an electricity-free society? Yes, exactly. The explosion wouldn't hurt anybody, uh, but the results of this would destroy systems that we depend on. We don't have much food stockpiled. Uh, we don't have water stockpiled at all for most people. It comes out of pipes, uh, air conditioning, right. heating. You can see the problem. Well, that's a horrifying uh, possibility. How are we protecting against that happening? We're not. <laughs> There's been a, a, a commission that the uh, Congress authorized starting in 2001. They've been writing reports on it. The electrical industry has been studying some ways to harden systems, but we're really not protected, and nobody's done an experiment. The last time this kind of EMP happened was in 1961 when the U.S., and the Russians tested the effect. Hmm. But why wouldn't this be at the very top of the priority list if the effects are that overwhelming and terrible? Well, that's one reason I wrote my PJ Media article is because everybody's worried about nuking San Francisco, is North Korea doing that. This is far more terrible, maybe not quite as dramatic and a lot more science fiction-like, but part of it is the military has focused on this for a long time, but it was in the context of nuclear war where losing the electrical grid and so on was kind of the least of our problems. So uh, why would it take a year if the grid were disabled to get it back online? If it destroyed the custom many hundred ton EHV transformers on the system, we don't have nearly enough spares. They're custom made. Uh, it takes a long time to build them. It takes a long time to deliver them. There's also the control systems that would go out. Nuclear power plants could melt down because of damage to their control systems. Uh, you, it could take a very long time to restore even a semblance of what we're used to. I'm going to try not to order a year's worth of freeze-dried food on my phone in the commercial break, John, but I may not be able to control <laughs> myself because you've just rattled me. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it.